a freaking awesome loan officer? Nick Smallwood. I am so blessed to know this man. He is one of the greatest people I've ever met in my life and I've ever been around. Blessed to even know. Nick Smallwood came to us by uh, quite by accident. Uh, a lot of his friends and colleagues happened to work for our company. And uh, Nick came down to, uh, to see what, what the fuss was, why people were doing this. I invited Nick down, uh, wanted him to see what it was and how it worked. And lo and behold, he is the only person in my 24 year career that I ever got fired from their current employer. He hadn't signed one piece of paper. He hadn't done anything. He just wanted to come down and spend time with his friends. And lo and behold, he got fired. So of course we picked him up immediately. This was a blessing in disguise for us. We had him licensed within two days and brought him on. And I am blessed, I'm a better person for knowing Nick and his wonderful wife, Madeline. Nick, I appreciate you taking time out. I know you're busy right now, especially we're getting into that spring season. So thank you very much for taking that time. I appreciate you having me. I noticed that uh, beautiful uh, U.S. flag behind you. Yes. Uh, that's something you stand for. Oh, absolutely. 100%. I make the joke and I tell people all the time that you're Captain America. <laughs> Uh, sometimes I feel like it. So let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, what this is, is a series of questions that your colleagues have put together that I want to know more about you. Uh, I want to get that one-on-one -on -one interaction. Some of these might catch you off guard. And uh, for that, I really don't care. Uh, I want the real raw answers of who Nick Smallwood is. I got gotcha. you. Here's one that may be hard for you to answer, but I think uh, I know part of the answers myself. Um, what makes you stand out from other loan officers? I think the biggest thing that helps me stand out is my communication skills um, that I am constantly giving out to uh, everybody uh, in the process uh, from the buyer's agent to the, the seller's agent, um, even with the uh, processor and underwriter. As long as we're all on the same page, it helps uh, create a smooth process for everyone. That's a great answer. That's that's exactly what I expect from you. You are an incredible communicator. Um, you go above and beyond trying to make sure everybody not only understands, but you educate people. And that's an, an incredibly admirable quality. I'm going to ask you, uh, you are actually the first one of your kind that I've ever worked with. I'm not positive exactly what the proper terminology is, and I mean absolutely no disrespect about this. Uh, you have uh, uh, two people that you consider your really good friends that are here. There's Doug Cook, right. uh, retired E-8 Army veteran. There is Gareth Beal, uh, Army veteran. You yourself are not retired. You yourself are not a veteran, even though... Uh, uh, you, you, I guess theoretically you, you are, but what is it? Because you do something different than anybody I've ever done. You are in the national guard, Correct. you're in, I'm assuming it's the state guard and you are in the army and you're active. Uh, and what I mean by active is that you are currently right now enlisted. You go, uh, periodically during the month, you go periodically during the year. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Educate me. Yeah, absolutely. So I am in the Arkansas National Guard, which is a basically like a sub branch of the big army. Um, when it comes to uh, like a true status, you can say I'm in an active drilling status. So what that means is one week in a month, I go to, for us, we go to Fort Chaffee, Fort Smith is where we drill. And then during the summer period, we have what's called annual training. We also nicknamed it as summer camp. And it could be to some people as a vacation away from the real world, so to speak. But um, that's, that's kind of the, the short end of it. Now, one of the things that I know that really took me by surprise, and uh, this is when I, I, I um, started realizing more of what this meant. Uh, all of a sudden, one day down here last summer in Houston, Texas, uh, we have a torrential, horrible hurricane beating down on us. Um, we had, uh, I believe it was over 3,000 square miles of uh, coastline and intercoast uh, that, that were flooded. 
and lo and behold, I get a text message from this kid of, from Arkansas letting me know that he's right here in my state helping flood victims in my state. Help me understand that. So that's one of the uh, major uh, tasks for the National Guard is um, helping with uh, things stateside. So natural disasters like the uh, flood down in Texas. Um, literally, I was actually going to ride down with AJ to go help before we even actually got caught up to uh, uh, active duty stateside. It's called it's it's called a SAD mission, S A D, State Active Duty. I don't know why they picked that acronym or whatnot for SAD, but it it was an actual an honor to be able to come down and uh, help those in need. So with that being said, uh, it, we literally had out 24, 48 hours. We were ready. We were packed up and ready to roll um, to head down there to uh, Texas. Now, one of the things that really took me by surprise, it, it was my first experience with it, and I'm talking from the cheap seats, is um, uh, at one point you had texted me and you were right down the street from uh, where the corporate office is. So I'm, tr I'm trying to set it up I, again, you know, I, my ignorance. I'm trying to set up, hell, me and Chad are going to come out and have lunch with you. Uh, about the time that uh, uh, we can do all that, you're gone. You're not in Rosenberg, Texas anymore. You're now in Lake Jackson. About the time yeah. we figured out we could get to Lake Jackson, uh, you were uh, moved off to Austin or wherever it was. So that's pretty normal, I guess. Yeah. So one of the biggest things with the National Guard is, or just in military in general, is um, going where you're told to, basically. So if we if we need to go to one place, we'll go there and stage and wait for uh, tasks to come down the pipeline, so to speak. Um, and if we once we complete those tasks, then we move on to the next next item that we needed to do. And if it means that moving to the next city, then so be it. And that's that was one of the things down there in Texas. It was we were city hopping, helping anywhere and everywhere we can. I thank you for it for one, and I know every Houstonian, everybody in South Texas appreciates it. Appreciate the support. What technology do you love using that's provided to you by Hancock Mortgage Partners? One of the biggest things that stood out to me that that I haven't seen from other uh, other mortgage companies is the ability to lead generate and actually give those items or those leads out to agents. A lot of times it's the role, the role is reversed where the agents are given the loan officers leads. But now what I like about it is we're, we're changing that, uh, that standard and reversing everything and handing leads out to real estate agents. Yeah. I want to clarify that real quick. So what we've done here is something that's different than most other people. Um, uh, when I was uh, a loan officer starting out 24 years ago, I had to go into real estate offices, beg for their business, and bring donuts and rate sheets. And it wasn't something that was not only comfortable, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense. And I was very replaceable at that. Now, one thing that, that we've done is we've built a system here to where we generate leads for ourselves. We are generating leads for the mortgage professional to close and and to help people into homes. Now, one thing that we have realized is that it's not legal for us to tell people how much the property is. It's not legal for us to tell people uh, how many bedrooms, the square footage, anything like that. So we need those real estate referral partners desperately to take care of all the things that we cannot do. We cannot. Uh, uh, talk about any of the uh, intricacies of the home, anything like that. All we can do is the mortgage. And it's very important for us to be able to have that. Is that, is that uh, more clarifying? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's when it comes to the whole home buying process, I mean, it's a team effort from the real estate agent to the loan officer, to the processor, to the underwriter, to the appraiser, just to name a few people that touch the file. Awesome. Awesome. Now, this leads us into the next question, and I think you're going to like this one. What changes are you going to do to increase the amount of leads for yourself and your referral partners in the next quarter and in the remainder of the year? Uh, the biggest thing is taking the technology that we have with Hancock Mortgage and educate the real estate agents on um, what we have and what to do to better their business. Um, 
individually, um, especially with all the, uh, the new algorithms coming out with Facebook and everything, if they haven't hit already, that we're, uh, we're right there with the changes and we're pushing it out to the agents so to make sure that they're ahead of the game and ahead of the uh, competition to make sure that they're also building uh, their business properly. So um, there was a saying, and I'm trying to remember it uh, off the top of my head, but it, if you help other people with their business and problems in return, your business and problems are helped uh, automatically. Yeah, I, I, I love it. Uh, a lot of us uh, abbreviate that down to the law of reciprocity, but that's exactly what it is. That's a perfect way to say what exactly what you just said. Matter of fact, one of the things that I know about uh, yourself, myself, a, a number of us um, uh, in this business, especially with Hancock, is the amount of money that we spend on ourselves to educate ourselves. It's, it's the traveling all across the country. It's, it's taking the money out of your pocket to make sure that we better ourselves, that we're at the top of our game uh, to help not only our customers, but our referral partners. Um, you and I are actually uh, getting on two separate planes next week to fly out to Northern California to sit with the people who, in my opinion, are probably the best in the business, the Brian Stevenses and the Frank Gray, to learn more about how to put video marketing together. Exactly, I, I'm excited. Um, there's, I know that with um, nowadays, people will watch video um, and actually get to know you better through video than actually come, coming in and sitting in your office and getting to know you that way. So, so I think people would rather stalk you on Facebook to get to know you before they actually get to know you face to face. And one of those things is videos. Um, and be able to market yourself uh, in in a way that people can connect. Uh, if if people can't connect to you, then it's it. I mean that then honestly, it's there's no point in in trying because if if I'm not comfortable with you and you're not comfortable with me, then it's not going to be a, a comfortable process at all. It goes back to that saying: know, like, and trust. People do business with people that they know, like, and trust. Exactly. What do you love most about being a loan officer? One of the biggest things that I like being a loan officer is the ability to solve problems that honestly, a lot of people don't think they have. Um, and to tell you the truth, not even tell them that they have the problem, just kind of make sure we get the problem solved behind the doors and make sure it's a, a smooth, clean process for them. Um, and w once they get to the, the end goal and sign the closing docs, it's, it's definitely all worth it. Agree, agree. I think I saw a T-shirt one time that said "loan officer," uh, and it w it was uh, uh, very much like a, a Webster's dictionary, and the 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 term was "loan officer," and I think it says something about to solve the problems that you don't even know you have yet, or something like that. Yep, yep. I, I almost bought one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's one that I that I think that uh, is very imperative, and if, and and you need to give. Um, as many answers uh, as, as you can because I'm going to drag them out of you. You happen to be one of the best people in this business. Uh, you're very young. You're very energetic. Um, you've got the, um, the veterans in your uh, sites to where you help them. It's something that's important, but you help everybody. Do you have any tips or advice to help other loan officers? For other loan officers, you got to ask for the business. If you don't ask, the answer is no. And what's the worst that they're going to say is is no. Uh, but putting yourself out there and asking for the business shows the real estate agent, hey, this person's willing to at least step out and put himself in, in an uncomfortable situation and ask for the business. Um, because I know when I started as a loan officer, I never asked for the business. And I, I saw it in my production and it suffered. And as soon as I started asking for business and showing those agents, Hey, I'm good at what I do. Um, then they started trusting me more and sending me more business. And then in return, they also word of mouth from agent to agent has also, um, been able to increase my business as well. Here's something else I know about you. And I want to share, this is something that I want to get out there, uh, and let everybody know about this. Um, if there was another loan officer in your area, 
anywhere in your part of the state, anywhere in the country that needed your help, and this may even be somebody who is your competitor, are you going to take your time to help them? Absolutely. Uh, it, it's funny that you say that because I had a, uh, a real estate agent reach out to me this past week. Uh, their their clients felt uncomfortable with the closing disclosure. And she uh, reached out to me and was like, hey, can you review this for them and make sure there's nothing shady going on? So I, I took the time and, and looked at it and crunched numbers for them and, and let them know, hey, look, there's nothing shady going on, but there's also other possibilities that you could save money. Um, and I just presented those items to them, even though they were like a week from closing. And I know that loan officer probably didn't like me for that, but I gave them other options to be able to help them keep money in the bank without uh, putting it all into their house. One thing that, um, that comes second nature to you is how you help others um, how you're, you're not worried about giving out an education, something that you've learned, teaching others. And I think that that's something that's very important in this business. There's so many people that hold that inside. They, they keep it as a secret. They, they think that they've got something over on somebody, and that's not you at all. No, no. I, I, I don't like when people do that, so I don't want to be the person that does that to other people. Um, especially when it comes to trying to get someone in a house, because as you know, as most of us know that a home is the biggest purchase that anyone's ever going to make in their life. So if we can, even if we have to sacrifice some time to help that client out, even though it's with another company, then I'm, I'm all for it. Agree. Agree. This next question is one that I actually wanted to uh, take out of here. Um, I, I feel it very self-serving. I don't. I didn't like it. Um, I was told by your colleagues that I was not allowed to take it out. That it had to stay. It had to remain exactly like it was. Um, so I may not be a big fan of it, but I have to leave it in there. Okay. What do you love about working at Hancock Mortgage Partners? The big one of the biggest things that I, I love about Hancock Mortgage Partners is every employee is willing to drop what they're doing to help you uh, problem solve or figure out a solution for whatever issue that you may may have. And then from from day one, I mean, it felt like a family and that they're, they're, they've got your, your back 120%, kind of like the military. So it's, it's, you know, the guy standing to your left and the guy standing to your right has got you covered and it feels the same way at this company. That's awesome. One of the things, uh, and we can cut this out if you don't want to talk about it. One of the things that I, uh, I'm very proud of, uh, and it's not a boastful thing, but you just said something that really uh, tugged at my heartstrings, is um, when that other company you were with terminated you, uh, they not only kept your loans, they kept your pay, and uh, we made sure that you got paid. Uh, oh, absolutely, and I'm, I'm forever grateful for that too. I'm not saying that for you to be grateful, but it's one of the things that I think needs to be said. When people say um, how much they, they, they like and appreciate, that it's, it's uh, again, that law of reciprocity. Uh, because of me, uh, you were terminated and they stole your money as far as I'm concerned. Um, and, and we made sure that we actually paid you for loans that we never saw the amount of money that was due to you, not a portion of, not half of, not 25%, all of, it. all of it that was owed to you from the other company that stole your money. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to leave this in or if I'm going to cut this out, but to me, that's very important. That tells a lot about somebody's character. Yeah, exactly. Um, what is the one obstacle that you have had to overcome as a loan officer? kind of goes back to what we were just talking about. Uh, an obstacle is finding the right company to work with. Um, not every company is built the same. Um, yeah, trying to find the right company that is the best fit for you and your goals and what you want to accomplish is, has been an obstacle. And I, and I think I've, I, I mean, me personally, I think I've overcome that obstacle right now. And I know that I'm, I'm where I need to be to be able to accomplish the things that I need to accomplish. You know, I never thought about that before, um, you know, and that's really silly after 24 years in this business, 
um, of not thinking about that. But you're right, that is a huge obstacle. There are so many people that are with uh, a company that doesn't necessarily fit them or even care about them or care about their business. Uh, all they care about is the revenue that they generate and they, they may not, um, and they may not show that appreciation. That's a huge one. I never even really paid attention to that, I don't think, to where finding that, that right fit. Right. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty deep. I, I appreciate that answer. Now, this one's going to be really funny. Uh, one reason I like this one for you is because you're still young enough to remember what it is you wanted to be when you grew up. <laughs> um, you know, I'm talking to some of uh, uh, the older guys uh, about some of these questions and things like that. Hell, none of us can even remember anything except for the long hair and the uh, music cranking on the Camaro when we were in high school. But did you always want to be a mortgage loan officer? If so, why? If no, what were you pursuing before you did this? So no, the answer is no to, to the first question. I, I did not always wanted to be a loan officer. I actually, as soon as I got out of high school, I started working at a restaurant and was there for five years and worked my way up all the way to uh, assistant manager. Um, I wanted to get out of the food industry. So I, I actually talked to a friend that was working at a local bank. Uh, who She was in the appraisal department and she got me connected with who I needed to and actually uh, started out my mortgage career as a mortgage processor. Did that for a uh, about two years um, and then decided, hey, I want to get back to the people and the customers because I love interacting with the customers. And so uh, that's how I became a loan officer and it's been history ever since. To answer your second question, <laughs> I mean, there's still things that I, I wouldn't mind doing. I mean, I've always wanted to be a police officer. I always wanted to be a firefighter as well. Um, when I when I first started college, my my uh, degree was in um, oh what was it landscape architecture, and then that changed to criminal justice. This there's so it's there's so many things that I would like to do, but. I, there's just some things that are, are meant to to be. And I think being a loan officer is more meant to be than those other items right now. Well, you're absolutely intelligent, personable, quick, sharp. So I know for a fact you could be anything you want to be. Appreciate it. What is one piece of advice you would give to someone looking to either purchase their first home, their forever home, their move up, their move down home. What is one piece of advice that you would give to any of those people? Whether it's from the first time home buyer to somebody downsizing or their forever home, you got to remember that it is a process, a process that we're perfecting and getting better and faster every day. But there are some times that it may take longer than the normal than what we want to do. You just got to remember that trust the process and we'll, we'll get the job done for you. That's great advice. Um, earlier I was talking to somebody and, uh, it was actually, uh, uh, one of your friends and probably one of your mentors as mine, Doug Cook. And, uh, you'll, you'll get a kick out of this being from that same military background. So Doug said one of his hardest things to overcome was the fact that because he came from, uh, from uh, a 25 year uh, army veteran um, and to the civilian world is when he told people that he needed, let's say three months worth of their bank statements and they would say, no, you don't. As an E8, it was very difficult for him. <laughs> to... All right, on your feet, half right face, front lean. Exactly. Right. <laughs> so uh, it was very difficult for him to uh, to uh, sit back, breathe, think for a minute, and then uh, go over in a, uh, uh, a civil way explaining why we do need that and things like that. Right. Do you find, do you find that? Uh, because... If I remember correctly, you were just promoted uh, in in the uh, uh, reserves, 
to a, a new position here recently. Is it difficult for you to do the same thing? I mean, honestly, I think that's one of the things with being a National Guardsman. I, I come back to the civilian side more so than um, like Doug Cook with a 25-year uh, experience in the military. He's, he's used to that structure and used to having subordinates do what he says because, I mean, he's earned that rank. Um, so with me, I can make an easy switch, come and go to the military back to civilian side and um, – be able to tell a client like, Hey, this is the reason why we need this. It's not, I'm not doing this because I want to do it. It's because we need to do it. It's just one of the things that we have to do to be able to close your loan. So, so it sounds to me, you have, a, um, you may have a benefit or, a, a, an easier time, um, knowing whether you're in your, uh, army fatigues or in your loan officer uh, clothes? Oh, absolutely. And there's there's actually been multiple times where I'm down at drill and people are asking me, hey, I'm thinking about bond. What do you think? And I'm like, well, do A, B, and C, and then I think we can get you there and X, Y, Z. So it's, it's, it's honestly, it's constant, whether, whether I'm a civilian side or military. And, and you know, I, I love it. And uh, be able to help other people 24 seven, so to speak. Uh, so it's, I, uh, like that's something that impresses me about you. Um, in, in this business, in theory, uh, we all work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we're never really off regardless whether you're at the game on Sunday, you're still there for your referral partners. You're still there for your customers. But, um, knowing you and working with you, it's the first time I've actually seen somebody, uh, and if I use the wrong terminology, please correct me, but somebody who's actually deployed, somebody who's actually in Georgia, not even your own state, and still closing loans in Texas, still closing loans uh, while you're wearing your Army fatigues. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I mean, it's like you said, 24-7. It doesn't matter what's going on in life. There's one point where I was in the Bahamas with Matt on and uh, – an agent needed an answer on something. So I just hopped on my laptop real quick, got them the answer and went back to the beach. I mean, it's, it's whatever we need to do to get the job done. And if it means being up till one, two o'clock in the morning to make sure the files ready to go for the process or an underwriter the next day, then so be it. Now, one thing I think we need to point out uh, from what you just said about being in the Bahamas, uh, that email probably cost you a hundred dollars to send and the communications uh, by text or by phone were probably a couple hundred dollars for you to uh, to take those calls also. Well, good thing uh, within my cell phone plan, there's certain locations that I can travel to and it's text messages are included in that. But uh, nowadays when people are traveling, they're hopping on Wi-Fi to make Wi-Fi phone calls and send their texts. So all I had to do was pay for the room. <laughs> all right. So this is the Bryant Gumble question. This is the one that I try and get it out of you. Uh, something that I think that the, uh, the public needs to know. Uh, uh, your friends, your family, your coworkers, colleagues need to know. Um, tell me how difficult it is for you. So you're married to your high school sweetheart. Correct. Madeline is one of the neatest people I've ever met in my life. I absolutely adore her. Um, you're in a position where you're working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Your wife happens to be a real estate agent who's working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you also leave at least one weekend a month and you leave for periods of time scheduled to go uh, and train and, and do your drills and you can be called up at any moment's notice. Tell me how difficult or how you deal with that on a daily basis, knowing that the phone call could be coming through, knowing that you can't plan uh, something this weekend, knowing that she may be out showing houses while you're pre-calling somebody. Tell, tell me how that is to live with that. I mean, we we both know that in our work, well, I guess in our day-to-day uh, -day 
operations, so to speak. I mean, it's, it's a part of it. Uh, we just have to sometimes keep our, our nose down and keep grinding our way. Um, just to be able to, I guess, I mean, hmm, that's a good question. Never. I mean, honestly, I really never thought about it because it's just, it's become habit and it's, it's, it's something that we're used to and we don't think about it's, it's just another, another, another thing that we, we have to do to be able to get things done. There's the, I mean, at, if a call comes and so be it, there's the terminology that I like to, to use. It's called embrace the suck. Uh, sometimes the suck is getting that phone call and uh, having to pack up and go um, on a short notice, but it, it life is not always a, a sunshine and rainbows. You just got to adjust fire and keep moving forward. Got it. That's, that's probably the exact uh, answer I would have expected. And I wanted to hear, um, I think because you two are such, um, wonderful, caring human beings that it's probably easier for the two of you than it is for others. Um, and, and I, for one, appreciate both of you. Uh, going back to uh, something you said, I'm very thankful that the uh, food industry didn't work out for you. <laughs> I'm very grateful it didn't work out either. <laughs> uh, I, I am very thankful and grateful that you were here with me. Um, I do think you would make a, uh, an incredible police officer, except for you probably would not give me a warning. Uh, I think you would make an incredible fireman because uh, not only your, your skill, your caring, uh, you have a do not quit attitude that I think is necessary for any of those positions. I, for one, hope you stay in the mortgage business. The mortgage business has lost a lot of really good people uh, because of, of the, the ups and downs with it. Uh, when the average age of a loan officer is 54, 56 years old, uh, we in this industry need you. We need young guys, we need young people in this business because if we don't have that, then at some point, our children, our grandchildren will end up having to sit at a big box bank and hopefully get a loan within 90 days or 120 days. And it's just not something that uh, after spending half of my life in this business, I don't really wanna think about that. Um, being a, even an option. So I hope you choose to stay in this business. I hope it's something that, uh, that you enjoy. And uh, I know that you will perfect and uh, perform better than anyone else. I appreciate you. I appreciate Madeline. And uh, I truly thank you very much for choosing Hancock Mortgage Partners because you and I both know you could be at any company you wanted to be tomorrow. So well, I appreciate it. Yeah. And, and we definitely appreciate y'all and the, uh, the helping hand that y'all presented for us as well. So it's, it's, we're, we're absolutely grateful too. Like I said, there's a reason why Nick Smallwood is a freaking awesome loan officer. He's in Northwest Arkansas. And I highly recommend if you don't know this man, reach out on Facebook, reach out on LinkedIn, reach out, email him, find him, talk to him. He will help you. He will make you better. And if you're lucky enough to be one of his customers, he'll take care of you like no other will. Nick Smallwood is a freaking awesome loan officer. Thanks, bro. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks, sir.